Hi everyone, today I'll be covering the Pimax Portal. The Portal is one of those handhelds that we've known about for a little while, but it has taken a little bit of time from the initial Kickstarter campaign to getting retail units in people's hands. On top of that, there have been changes to the product lineup along the way. For example, the standard 128 gig unit I've gotten doesn't have the LEDs for the controllers. And Pimax have recently made available a retro edition which doesn't have detachable controllers or any VR capability and unfortunately kept the same control scheme. So there's a lot to take in and figure out, so I've thrown the spec list on screen just to help us out along the way. My portal is the 128 gig non-retro version. Across the specs you've got the Snapdragon XR2 chip, which should give us up to GameCube emulation reliably, with quite a few PS2 and Wii games playable when pushing it. The screen spec vary, but at worst you have a 5.6 inch LCD screen at a 2K resolution, and the weight is really light considering which makes sense given the ability to plug into a VR headset. I won't be covering the VR sides of things today though and purely focusing on the retro gaming side, but it is worth bearing in mind that the portal is capable of doing far more than what I'm doing with it in this video. Straight out of the box, I was super surprised with just how light the portal is. It's about 60 grams lighter than the OLED switch with Joy-Cons attached, and considering it's one of my more powerful Android handhelds, that was super surprising. Unfortunately, the lightness does come at a slight price of weaker battery when compared to other Android handhelds, with it averaging out at about four-ish hours of battery life for me. The portal feels like a really decent piece of hardware in the hand, and I think it looks great too. The fact that you can detach and reattach the controllers so easily does turn it into a mini retro multiplayer console at will, although it's a shame there's no inbuilt kickstand to make the most of this feature when out and about. The bottom facing speakers are surprisingly powerful and that pretty much sums up the portal for me. There's a lot of power in this tiny little frame and although the ergonomics are hindered by it being so small and my hands getting a bit cramped over longer gaming sessions, the lightness and portability of it makes it a great handheld to carry with you. The biggest drawback the portal has in terms of retro gaming is that it was never built to be a retro gaming handheld in the first place. This is most apparent in its control scheme, where the shoulder trigger buttons have a super small travel and even rub slightly against the centre plastic when used repeatedly. The shoulder buttons themselves are particularly thin with a clicky feel and the raindrop buttons are okay but obviously more suited to being shared and used horizontally undocked. The D-pad is raindrop style too and ultimately this is fine when using in a single direction but very restrictive when trying to move around multiple directions. I understand why they've gone with this design choice, of course, but it would have been great to have seen a dedicated retro gaming plug-in controller choice, as the portal would be so much better with it. So I'll cut some emulation now and summarise back up at the end.
So ultimately, I think the Pimax Portal is a great handheld. It's not the perfect retro gaming handheld by any means, but to its credit, that's not what it was designed for. I do wish there were dedicated retro gaming controller options available, as that would resolve the majority of my gripes with it. But still, the Portal still offers a lot of bang for the buck. That's it for now though. Thanks so much for watching.